It is 810 on the WGAN Morning News. Good morning to you. Friday morning, and the morning quickly is evaporating in front of our very eyes. It's already 8 o'clock. Time flies when you're having fun. And we're joined now by Dana Connors from the Maine State Chamber of Commerce. We're talking about the state's response to the COVID-19 crisis and its impact on businesses here. Dana, welcome to the program this morning. Well, thank you, Matt. Uh, good day to you as well. Appreciate it. So obviously, pretty grim news overall for the state of the economy. A couple months ago, it was roaring and perhaps uh, you know better than it ever had been. And today, we are living through uh, what is perhaps the worst that it's ever been. So yep. your, your thoughts on where we stand today? Well, actually, um, what has been eight weeks seems like eight months when you realize what we have been living with and living through and the impact it's had. It, I think it all has us in a state of mind that we can't wait until we get back to business, uh, so to speak. I would say that that yesterday's announcement around testing is significant. I think that we've all recognized the role, the value that testing has in both our lives, but also in our livelihood, the fact that I see it as a possibility of opening up our, our uh, economy more quickly. Uh, and I think it's something that is key to our success. But I must also say that um, our officers at the chamber has, uh, when I say has met, I mean that by Zoom. I uh, use that word too loosely. But by by Zoom uh, earlier this week, as well as being on a podcast, uh, which I was a part of, I, in addition to the testing, had expected that to hear and hope I still can or we can today um, – efforts to really that would encourage us and give us some hope around reopening the economy. We all recognize the um, priority associated with public health, but public health has a broad implication in terms of our economy, but also in terms of our social standing. And frankly, um, I was hoping and expecting to hear news around a priority that we have felt that's very important, and that is a timeline um, in other words, increasing uh, the opening uh, more expeditiously, um, dealing with the, um, the two-week quarantine in terms of encouraging uh, to, in the marketplace our priority, placing it on testing and protection, and also had highly expected this week that we would hear about um, the regionalization. We all recognize in this state that that it is a big state by size. Our density is different. The incidence of the the virus itself plays out differently. And in conversations with the governor, uh, it became clear that she she's recognized this with her team, and we had expected to hear what that regionalization approach would be so that we wouldn't all have to wait for the whole state to open up at once, but different regions could open up based upon the incidents, the protocol that was necessary, and so forth. So there, there are things, I believe, on, on the horizon, so to speak, more immediate, that allows us to both open up sooner, uh, that also opens up in a way that we don't have to wait for everyone. Uh, and, and certainly, this two-week quarantine stands in the way of a tremendous, or is a uh, the two-week quarantine is really an expression of an incredible impact on an industry that reaches just about all aspects of our economy. We say it's $8 billion, but I think that's a very conservative estimate. I think it exceeds that by, by many millions of dollars. Leaps and bounds, yeah. Dana Connors from the Maine State Chamber of Commerce is nice enough to join us this morning to talk a little bit about his perspective on the state's response and the reopening plan specifically um, to try to deal with the economic fallout from the COVID-19 crisis. I imagine, Dana, uh, this is a pretty difficult time to be in a position like yours because obviously you want to maintain strong relationships in the state house and with the, with government officials and whatnot. And you also are, like the rest of us, concerned with the, the COVID-19 crisis and want everybody to be healthy. But businesses are being obliterated. I mean, there's really no other way of putting it. I, the, the unemployment rate is skyrocketing. You now have 125,000 unemployed Mainers. You have businesses that are closing left and right permanently. And even the people that are getting the federal assistance dollars to prop up their businesses in the short term, many of them are not sure if that's even really going to work for them. And so a lot of people can't even take them. So the the devastation, economically speaking, that's being wrought across the state is tremendous. And I imagine that just has to make you stand up for businesses more at this particular time. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you set it up extremely well. The very fact that we are now in that stage where it is 
uh, about recognizing and trying to encourage the reopening because every day adds to the very situation that you just expressed. Every day the anxiety goes up because our costs continue, but our revenues are not there. And so how do you actually balance that? I mean, there's no question when you look around at the state of Maine, and sometimes this gets lost in expression, but when you look around the state of Maine and recognize how businesses are stepping up. When you go to a grocery store today, uh, there is no doubt that the responsibilities that they have assumed uh, on behalf of the public and on behalf of public health is without question. You walk up an aisle, you walk down another aisle by virtue of the arrows. You don't go to the registry you want. You're directed to the registry you want. You stand at the appropriate place. The social distancing is something that I believe that the public in the state of Maine have really taken this on with responsibility. We all know that, and I don't say this lightly or in any way diminish from the public health priority, but every day we walk out, we assume a risk of some sort. And I think that while the public has recognized that, they at the same time have have been witness to the seriousness of this pandemic and the fact that we need to do everything we can. I think that's a real um, example that should not be lost. While the testing helps us, while the businesses themselves, there's like, uh, I think I heard Commissioner Johnson say there were 3,000 businesses that have stepped up, this, that have applied to her for earlier opening because they put in place protocols. They've looked at their practices and put in place safeguard practices to help the public and to be assured that they can operate in this environment that we find ourselves in. So to your point, absolutely everything that we can do, either by uh, showing examples of what we're doing uh, or the experiences that we've had or examples of what others have done, helps us to work towards a reopening as quickly as possible, as safely as possible. And I think that is what unites all of us at this point in time. And we were talking to Dana Connors from the Maine State Chamber of Commerce about the state's response to COVID-19. The other thing that I, I always want to make sure when we talk about this subject that we, we get in there is that we're, we're basically forced to choose between two kind of crummy end results, right? It's, you know, public health versus economic devastation and trying to balance them as much as possible is obviously what we should be trying to do. But there, there are two negative consequences here. And what I think a lot of people, when they hear, you know, concern about the economy and jobs and businesses, they hear money. But you know more probably better than anybody else, Dana, that this is people's entire life's work, their livelihoods, something that they saved up their whole, you know, life up, you know, when they're 50 years old and they decide to finally start a business and they, you know, had, had worked towards this moment their entire life and all of a sudden in a snap of a finger that kind of stuff is gone this is about far more than just simply jobs and money oh absolutely uh when you think of the profile of Maine's businesses and we'll use the we we'll use the sba definition of 500 that's to us a large business but it was a definition that's 99 percent of our business and, and we all know that so many of those businesses uh, represent companies that don't have rich resources. They don't have reserves that they can go back on. They're living, uh, they're living on the razor's edge. I mean, every day matters. And they have employees, and they care about their employees. That's what makes them successful in the long run. So, yeah, the problem gets magnified when you look at a profile like Maine, and you look at the various types of businesses in Maine, and you'll come to the same conclusion. This isn't just about making money at all. This is about the very fabric, fiber of our economy and recognizing that entrepreneurship, small business is our state. And uh, we need to do everything we can. And I think, you know, we all are trying. There's, this is a roadmap for which it has, we're, we're uh, preparing it as we go along. And I think we recognize the tremendous challenge, but also the responsibilities that every, every one of us have. And I think that unites us and the, and the ultimate hope, and that's a key word here, because every time we share something good, it gives us that sense of hope that we'll get back in the game sooner. That's really what brings us to this point in time. And everything that we can do that shows 
that we can operate safely. We can operate within the protocols that are necessary. I think that the commitment is there that every business wants to do that. Every business is committed to do that. We just have to get about the task of, of making sure that everybody recognizes that so that we can get back in business today, not Mm. months from today. Well said. I think uh, many of us would agree with you on that one. Dana Connors from the Maine State Chamber of Commerce joining us. Tell us a little bit about the state's response and the reopening plan and some of his hopes for the future, uh, leaving us with a little bit of optimism there, I think. Thanks a lot, Dana. Appreciate it. As always, talk to you again soon, hopefully. Yep. Thanks a lot.